Huge thanks to all the people who watched and commented on my latest project video about the watt balance. I got a lot of great feedback and interest, including from several of the scientists at NIST where they're working on full-size laboratory scale watt balances. This video is a follow-up to that to show some of the details about how the balance was made and answer a few of the more popular questions that popped up in response to that video. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a link below in the description. The main parts of the wad balance were made from cherry, which is a hardwood that's domestic to the US. I started with a rough sawn board, which I resawed on the bandsaw. Then I planed it to the correct thickness. The uprights were cut on the bandsaw using a printed template I drew on the computer. I sanded all the parts, then put a chamfer on the edges using a router table. For the knife edge pivot, I used a piece of brass bar filed to a semi-sharp edge on two sides. This was glued into a kerf in the center of the balance beam. I also glued two small pieces of brass on the insides of the uprights for the knife edge to pivot on. The uprights were connected to the base using washer head wood screws. The platforms were turned on the lathe from a piece of an elm tree that someone had cut down and left beside the road. First I turned the outside shape, then I drilled a hole in the bottom, finally it was parted off. This process was replicated for the other platform. The coils on the platforms consist of about 3000 turns of 36 gauge magnet wire. I set up a winder using my drill and a few clamps. This allowed me to control the speed of winding easily and stop when necessary. I also connected a Hall effect sensor to an Arduino and wrote a quick script to count the turns. Each time the magnet passed the sensor, the program would send an update over the serial connection, giving the turn count and speed. I also stopped every so often to pot the coil in epoxy to hold everything together. Winding these coils was definitely the hardest part of the entire project. Working with wire this thin is difficult, so if you try this yourself, just be patient. If you get in a hurry, you'll break the wire and have to start over, like I did. Twice. Just for reference, each coil took about an hour and a half to finish. The hangers for the platforms were made from brass bar stock, bent in a bench vise. Not the most elegant way to do this, but the results weren't too bad. These were glued in with epoxy. Once assembled, everything got a few coats of Danish oil to protect the wood and make it look fancy. I connected everything to the circuit board using 24 gauge magnet wire, not for any other reason other than I thought it would look nice. If I did it over again, I would use a much lighter gauge wire to avoid imposing any extraneous forces on the balance beam from the springiness of the wire. One commenter, Don Conley, had some good ideas about moving the electrical components off the balance beam to eliminate this issue entirely. He suggested swapping the permanent magnets into the platform so that the coils are stationary and using a mirror on the beam with a stationary laser rather than having the laser attached to the beam itself. The circuit for this is pretty straightforward and you can pull the diagram from the paper linked in the description. I put everything on some perf board and connected it up with Kynar wire. The circuit hooks up to a National Instruments data acquisition box, which allows the software to communicate with the watt balance. And I just saw that NIST is working on some new software to add features and improvements. That's a very brief summary about how the watt balance was built. Again, this design was based almost entirely on a paper prepared by some of the engineers and scientists at NIST, as well as the University of Maryland, which I have linked below. And I just want to say huge thanks to them for making outreach a priority and designing this cool demonstration. Now for a few of the more common questions. Number one, did you see Veritasium's video on the silicon sphere? Yes, I did. And he did an awesome job like he always does with physics subjects. I'll link that video below for anyone who hasn't seen it. Number two, how accurate is it? From my testing, I was coming within around 10% for all the measurements I took. I didn't do a thorough analysis of the error, but I think I could get a lot closer with a more accurate way of measuring current, and also by reducing the influence of the wires connecting the various components of the balance. Number three, doesn't your value for gravity affect the measurement? Yes, this is something I kind of gloss over, but should have explained a little bit better. Since the Earth's gravitational acceleration is one of the variables needed to measure mass using the watt balance, it has to be measured very accurately, just like all the other inputs. 
Earth's gravity changes by location, but also in time due to changes in groundwater and other fluctuations, so it needs to be measured each time you use the watt balance. Metrology labs have ways to do this accurately, but I don't, so I just use the international gravity equation in the video, which approximates the gravitational acceleration in your location based on latitude. Number four, wait, 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 the volt and the amp use the kilogram in their definition, so how can they be used to redefine the kilogram to be based on a physical constant? This is a great question, and it's one I intentionally avoided to keep the video relatively simple for anyone to understand. The redefinition of the kilogram requires fixing the value of Planck's constant by using quantum physical effects to measure electrical quantities with a mass traceable to the IPK. It gets a little bit complicated, so if you want to know more about that, the paper in the description that I link below does an awesome job of explaining the process in more detail. Finally, I also got a lot of really nice comments about the drawing I did during the intro sequence, so I made a separate video about that, and I also got some prints of that drawing made and put on my website, in case you'd like to hang one on your wall. And by the way, I finally have t-shirts on the website as well, and they're very, very soft and comfortable. More videos are coming soon. Huge thanks to the fans making that possible by supporting the channel on Patreon. Thank you for watching, and let me know what you think. 